I'm very proud that we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of NOAA ship Okeanos Explorer because it's allowing us to reflect on the 100 expeditions that we've conducted over this last decade and all the amazing discoveries we've made that are so important for science but also for our economy and national security. So the Okeanos Explorer is a national asset. Think about NASA. NASA has launched dozens of space probes to explore uh, deep space. We've mapped the surface of Mars and the Moon to a higher resolution than we've mapped our own seafloor. The deep sea is uh, the largest habitat on Earth. It's the least explored habitat on Earth. So it's a kind of the last vast unexplored realm. We're still really in the observation stage, just the, the pure natural history stage. We're constantly bringing up stuff that has never been described before. It's, it's kind of remarkable for me to think that 10 years have already passed. And it's exciting. It's great to see. The program has grown a lot over that time. There's a lot more participation since we first began. And there's scientists who look forward every year to the next field season starting. It's kind of like, when do I get my Okeanos fix? I need to see other unexplored parts of the deep ocean. I can remember very distinctly being on a dive when we found this just immense sponge that turned out to be the largest known sponge in the world. Every dive, there's something exciting. We're always going to see something new. Okeanos Explorer just recently identified a new deep sea coral reef track about 80 miles long uh, off the U.S. East Coast. That really is incredible. The, that is like finding a, an Amazon rainforest and all of its biodiversity in the middle of the California desert. We have elevated the importance of this program uh, to the White House and they are really keen on seeing us duplicate or actually even amplify the returns on investment we've made. My experience in exploration was mostly with human-occupied vehicles. So um, I, was, I was pretty skeptical about telepresence-enabled exploration. So, the opportunity that I had being out on the Okeanos Explorer for the Mariana Trench Expedition was really eye-opening for me. Not only was I participating in the, the dive with the other science lead, but with scientists calling in from all over the world, literally all over the world. So it was like really, it was very, very cool. And so really to take advantage of that um, you know, the excitement of, and, and participation in the discovery. So you don't have to have a sponge biologist, a fish biologist, a crustacean biologist, you know, on the ship at one time, because that's not, not feasible. It makes it really so much easier for broader participation in these missions of discovery. The interest and the buy-in among the scientific community has just grown exponentially. A lot of folks have seen the value of the program through the delivery of real, tangible results and discoveries and have become excited about it and shared that with their colleagues. The fact that the program has not just remained for 10 years but has really flourished is a testament to its inherent value to the scientific community. For about three years, I worked with the Okanos Explorer mapping team, and I, I think as of today, they're, they're very close to two million square kilometers of seafloor mapped. And that's just an incredible contribution. When we think about the work that the Okanos Explorer has done in mapping the seafloor over the last 10 years is adding an immense amount of information to our understanding of the physiography of the seafloor and the different biological and physical processes that are going on there. As a marine geologist, you know, there's been a number of discoveries that I, I have been excited about. The brine lakes, and then the asphalt extrusion we know as the tar lilies. 
I think for myself personally, the discovery of the seafloor methane seeps off the east coast of the United States has been probably the thing that I, I've been most excited about because um, it's really fundamentally altered my work. We went from being aware of, of essentially no seeps on the east coast to finding seven, eight, maybe even 900. And I think the biggest impact of that has been not only the initial discovery by the Okeanos Explorer, but the fact that in many cases, scientists have been able to take the observations, use those as the basis to support further research, further funding for research, and then return to these sites and really explore them with even greater detail. There are so many things that make the Okeanos program unique starting with seeing parts of the planet that no one's seen before, collecting that baseline data that is so important to make management decisions. And the telepresence capability allows such an engagement that most other vessels don't have. It means that many more people get to be part of that exploration and that science. My first cruise with the Okeanos Explorer, when we were in the Marianas, we found this hydrothermal vent that still gives me goosebumps. Um, ten stories tall, before that moment, had never been imaged before, just gushing, black, super hot fluid. It just was incredible. I was watching that night, and all of a sudden there was this like black smoke, and I was like, oh my gosh, how cool is this? This is so exciting. The next day, I think the LA Times reported this, and right after that, there was a huge increase in the number of viewers. So, you know, these types of discoveries really open people's eyes up to, you know, what's living in the ocean. I mean, it's easy for us to go outside and look up and see the stars and, you know, uh, you know envision what's happening in terms of space exploration. It's not so easy, if you, especially if you don't live on the coast, to figure out what's going on under underwater and why it's important. And I think having the telepresence enabled exploration has opened up the oceans to hundreds of thousands of people who hadn't experienced that before. Having that public engaged, having them there with you being a part of the exploration, so many people that will never get the opportunity to step on board a ship ever in their life, but yet they're there with you as you're seeing those new animals, those new habitats, those new behaviors. Telepresence in the Okeanos program truly democratizes ocean exploration and science, and that's something that really shouldn't be undervalued. Archaeology is a record of the past. It's unique in that it is one of those things that tells us what people actually cared about, what kind of things were important to them, what they did in their daily lives. And working with the Okeanos Explorer, we have learned a great deal more about what uh, has led up to our present relationship with the ocean. I've been there for sites like the Japanese midget submarines lost in the early moments of the attack on Pearl Harbor. These ships still loaded with artifacts are time capsules that speak to the past. And so I think the power of Okeanos Explorer out there, working, surveying, documenting, and sharing is absolutely essential. This is science for everyone. Every time you go, every time you drop down into that water, you're going to find something new. And that's the exciting part. We've also taken some of the video files and have been able to develop 3D models. So that has been a tremendous boon in trying to actually interpret the site. Uh, we publish this as a public website. Anybody can view it, and it's been quite popular. And that would not have been possible without getting the kind of high resolution, and high quality video that we've gotten from the Okeanos Explorer. If I could wave a magic wand, I'd have a fleet of Okeanuses out there. I think it's something that captures the public's imagination. In an age in which we might think that everything's been done, that there are no frontiers left, 
there still is this vast frontier that needs to be studied, that needs to be visited, that needs to be shared, and in some cases protected. Exploration is incredibly important because it's the first step in understanding our oceans. It allows us to answer those basic questions like what lives there? Or what habitats exist there? And without those answers, without that crucial baseline data, we can't really effectively manage our oceans. When we are planning our expeditions, we have our communication with managers who are interested in various resources, and so we need to get some kind of look at, well, what is the area that is either under consideration for protection or is already under protection? Did we make the right decisions? Should we expand it? Should we move it? Having that kind of information really is critical to us as managers to be able to appropriately protect those sites that we do feel are important and not worry about those that we know are not. And so being able to provide them with the data that they need um, is a really important service that uh, the Okeanos Explorer uh, fulfills. I think over the last 10 years, the Okeanos Explorer has sort of blazed a trail and served as a model for what federally funded, community-driven ocean exploration can be. And as I think about the next 10 years, I think there's so many exciting opportunities. Every day I come into the office and know that the Okeanos Explorer is diving in the ocean somewhere is a day when I expect my understanding of how the deep sea works may be challenged or changed, that the community's notions about processes of the deep sea or relationships may evolve that very day based on what the ship sees. So I think the value of exploration is that it allows us to push forward and have those moments where we go, wow, I really didn't expect that. Or that's something completely new and, and that doesn't make sense based on what we thought we knew. It's those moments that really push and advance science and I think that's, that's the true value of the exploration that the Okeanos Explorer does.